Uploading files to a web server is one of the most common requirements. In this video, we'll learn how to upload files in Adonis.js. And it's going to be so simple, sweet, and secure. So let's get started. Uh, we'll begin by creating a new application. So I'll say Adonis, new upload, hit enter. And I'm gonna take a few seconds to create a new application and install all the dependencies. Okay, uh, we are done with the installation. Let's cd into the directory and run the server. We have it running. Let's open it on the given port and we can see the welcome page. So the next thing that we need is to basically set up a form from where we can upload the file. So quickly open the editor and let's dive into the code. I'll open the routes file, which is inside app and HTTP directory. Uh, out here, you can see we are basically rendering the welcome view. So let's open it up. Resources, views, welcome, and get rid of all this HTML and start with the form builder. We can, we're going to say form dot open. Uh, where we want this form to submit, let's say to a controller called files controller and a method called store. Okay. Out here, close. We're going to say form dot close and we need uh, input type file so we'll say for the file whatever the name is let's say file for now or let's say yep file is fine i believe for now so let's go back refresh the page and it says there is an error cannot read property verb of undefined which means we need to define this controller inside our rocks file so we're going to register route, I'm going to say route.post uh, to slash file and it's going to be files controller dot store. Now come back, refresh, yep, all looks good. Let's quickly get rid of uh, the, these icons onto the bottom. So I'm going to say footer, take it off and back, we have it, okay. So if I inspect the element and check out the form tag we have out here, uh, you can see we have a form with a method of post, action to slash file. Uh, all this gets filled automatically when you make use of the form builder. We are basically, you know, binding it to an action. And behind the scenes, form builder will basically uh, fetch the HTTP method and whatever the route is with the help of this controller and the method. Next thing we need to fix is uh, the ENC type. It needs to be multi-part slash form data for that. All we really need to do is say files true. Okay, come back, refresh. You can see it's multi-part form data now. And we have an input type file, which means we can upload files now. That looks good. Okay, now in order to keep this uh, tutorial practical, I'll, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open a website called dropzone.js. It's a client-side library that can basically create this kind of a layout in order to upload files. So if I go to desktop files, let's upload this file. You can see it basically makes an AJAX call to the server and upload the file. So we are going to make use of it. Uh, just to keep the short tutorial practical. Okay, what we're gonna do now is go to cdnjs.com and make a search for drop zone. Yep. Copy the JS file from here. We'll go back to our templates. And for now, do it inside the master template. Out here, I'm gonna say script, uh, give it a source to the URL and we do need the basic CSS file. Uh, you can go through the documentation to understand how you can basically define your own custom layout. But for now, we're gonna use the default CSS to have something and not really get into writing CSS. Yep, we have it. So uh, let's open the documentation now. Uh, if you go to configuration, out here you can see we need to basically is set up some options in order to make it work properly. So out here again, I'm gonna say script, 
uh, type needs to be text slash JavaScript. And out here, we'll go back to the website, copy it from here and paste it. So the only property that we're gonna define right now is param name, that is to file. Okay, so when, you, when we are going to make use of a drop zone, this particular field won't be entertained. So whatever you have out here, uh, this is no more relevant. That's the reason we need to uh, specify the param name out here. Now, if you want, you can make it the profile pick, avatar, or whatever makes sense according to the context of your application. Uh, next thing we need in order to make uh, drop zone work is give our form a class. So we're gonna say class drop zone. With this done, let's go ahead and refresh the page. Well, we have it. So out here you can see we have a div. If you click on it, we can basically select any file to upload to the server. Uh, next thing we need is we need to get rid of this. So there are two ways, whether we can basically remove it entirely or we can keep, you know, like we can make it hidden behind a div call fallback. So if I refresh, it's no more there. So what basically drop zone behind the scenes is doing, it gonna, you know, like uh, make this particular input field hidden. And when you don't have JavaScript enabled, it will be shown to the user so they can still upload the files. I believe that's all. Next thing we need to do is we need to change uh, this name. So I'm gonna say file uploader. And this is basically a reference to an ID of the form. So that means we need to define an ID here. So I'm gonna say ID files uploader. Okay, and it needs to be basically referenced here as a uh, camel case. So files uploader, files uploader, ignore. Okay, so if I refresh the page, everything is fine. Let's select a file, say open. It shows an error icon with, with a very big error. Let's go to console and check out what the error is. It says CSRF token mismatch, which means we are supposed to make use of this helper called CSRF field. Come back, let's select the file once again. It's an error again. Open, it says cannot find module files controller, which means we need to create this controller. So go back, say A, A is basically an alias. So if I say alias A, that's an alias to slash ace. So I'm gonna say A, make controller um, the controller is files controller we have it let's go to the controllers directory open it and create the store method right here I'm gonna say request response <clears throat> and let's see how actually we can grab the uploaded file so all we really need to do is we need to say constant file and request dot file and whatever the param name is so in our case, the param name is file. So come back and give it here. For now, all we're really gonna do is we're gonna say response.okay file. That's all, okay? So come back to a refresh. Let's upload the file again. At this time, we get a check mark, which means the file upload was successful. Now, drop zone does not know whether we save this file or not. It basically shows the check mark based upon the HTTP status. Right now we are returning 200. So according to drop zone, it's a successful upload. But out here, if we will check out the properties of the file, we can see we have a size, we have the type of the image and a path to the temporary folder, which means we can easily validate uh, this file and move it to a given directory. Let's do that. <clears throat> So I'm gonna get rid of this and what we're gonna say is we're gonna say yield file dot move and where exactly we want to move this file. So for now we're gonna move it to the storage directory. Okay, so we're gonna say helpers dot storage path. 
Now, helpers is an inbuilt module that can give you path to so many directories. You can check out more about helpers on the official documentation. Out here, we are going to make use of helpers. So I'm going to say use helpers. And we're going to say the directory called uploads inside storage directory, which means we need to create this uploads directory. So I'm going to say storage slash uploads. And we have a blank directory out here. So basically, the move method will move our file to whatever path we are going to give it here. Next, we're going to make a check if not file.moved, which really means if the previous operation was not successful. Uh, here we're going to say response.bat request. And we're going to send the errors. So here I'm going to say error is going to be file dot errors, okay? And return from here. And if you are able to move the file, we're going to say uh, response dot okay with a success message by saying message file uploaded successfully, okay? So that's all we're going to do for now, and then later we're going to improve it. So come back, refresh, let's upload the file, and we get a check mark. If we check out the response, it says file uploaded successfully. Now, if we go to the uploads directory, for sure, we can see the uploaded file out here. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to make sure about. Very first, uh, if we upload the same file, like, like, like a file with the same name, it's going to replace the old one, which means we need to give them a unique name every time we are uploading the file. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a new name here. I'm going to say new name, or we can say file name. And we're going to make it dynamic with the help of the date, or basically the timestamp, new date dot get time and we need the extension of the file for that we can say file dot extension now if you're wondering how you're going to remember these methods like extension moved move what you really need to do is go to the documentation and quickly make a search for files uh, out here is a list of all the available methods client name client size extension uh, move and moved. Out here you can see that we need to give a path where to move the file with an optional new name. So that's what we're going to do this time. This time while calling the move operation, this needs to be out here on the top, uh, we're going to give it the new file name, which means this time we're going to have a unique name for each uploaded file. So let's go back and do a quick refresh, uh, upload the same file, we get a 200, uh, go back, you can see we have the same file, but with a dynamic name this time. Now there is another thing, uh, let's check it out. If I go ahead and upload a file, which is of 1.4 MB, the server will upload it. Now, if you wanna restrict the size, we can do it quite easily. All we really need to do is we need to set, pass another parameter to the request.file method and we need to give it the max size. So I'm going to say max size. Well, let's say we want to limit it to 1 MB. Okay, that's really all. Go back, refresh, uh, upload this file. This time we get an error. It says uploaded file size 1.35 MB exceeds the limit of 1 MB. See how easy it is. Also, we can uh, do a validation on extensions. So I can say allowed extensions. Uh, let's say for now only PNG. Go back, do a quick refresh. Uh, this is a JPEG. We upload it. We get an error again. It says uploaded file extension JPEG is not valid. Uh, we can add JPEG here and JPEG as well. Let's refresh and upload the file. Boom, this time we get 200 and the file has been uploaded here. Okay, you can see that. So 
uh, what, what really we are doing is we are uh, validating the size and the extension of the file once the file is inside the temporary directory, which means in order to get the file to the temporary directory, server still needs to process it. Now, let's imagine someone uploads a file of gigabytes. It will basically choke your entire server until and unless your server will process the entire file and move it to the temporary directory. Now, in order to escape from this behavior or to keep your server secure, uh, it only ships with a default configuration inside this file called body parser. And here is a max size of 2 MB. Now, this max size is applicable on the entire size of the payload, which means if you are uploading three files with one MB each on your server, your server will not let it because it will exceed the limit of 2 MB. And this check happens at the very initial stage before any files are even being processed, which means uh, even, even if someone is uploading the file of gigabytes, they will have no chance to clock your server. So let's check it out. Uh, it says 2 MB. Let's increase it to 4 for now. Uh, go back, do a refresh. And out here, I have a file which is almost 45 MB big. So I'll upload it out here. And you can see we got an error. But this time, it's not the error from our controller. This is an error at a very initial level from the server, it says. Uh, out here, let's resize it. It says request entity too large with a uh, status code of 413. Now, what we can do is we can basically handle this error and display a user friendly error instead of you know like getting mad on them and showing them uh, um, basically an exception out here. So, to handle exceptions, we need to get into the listener slash HTTP file. And out here, we handle the errors. So really on the top, I'm going to say if error.name is equals to request entity too large, we're going to say response dot bad request. And we're going to give it an error saying file is too large or too big, actually, and return from here. So come back, do a refresh, and this time upload this big file. And this time we get an error. It says file is too big, which means we are not throwing a mad exception. We are basically catching it and give, returning an, a user-friendly error. OK, so out here, we are able to keep our server secure by defining a max size inside the config slash body .js file. We are able to you know, define a max size on a given file and the allowed extensions that we want to allow. Uh, next thing we can quickly do is, uh, basically it's not related to file uploads, but it's something really nice to check out. Out here, we are basically requiring this tile sheet and the script tags out here on every page, which is not really good. It's only required on the upload page. So what we can really do is we can create a dynamic block out here. So let's get all the style sheets here and say uh, block styles, okay? Here say end block. Same we're gonna do for our script. So I'm gonna say block scripts and here say uh, and block out here and inside our welcome page which is basically the page to upload the files it will be different for, for you for sure we can say here blocks tiles and, and the block here and put this file out here okay same thing as we're gonna do for block scripts grab everything from the master file and drop it here. This way we are making sure it's not included on every page. Come back, refresh, it all works fine, but there is a problem right now. The problem is we only have one style sheet. Ideally, it needs to be three plus the fourth one specific to this page. So in order to get that, what we can do is uh, Super, which basically means like I'm inheriting from a parent. So super means call that first and then call me. Okay, it's like it's like basic JavaScript super thing. 
So come back here and do a refresh and we can see we have all four style sheets. So it's really nice. I believe that's all from this video. I'm going to see you guys next time. Goodbye.